He must have the authority to rule. There must be a realm that he rules in. In other words, he rules over he rules over people. How many know who is that king? Jesus is that king. Jesus is that authority. Jesus rules in heaven and earth in subordination to the Father. In his preaching, he proclaims what? When Jesus preached, he preached what? The kingdom of God. When he taught, he explained the kingdom. When he spoke parables, he illustrated the kingdom. When he healed the sick and cast out devils, he demonstrated the kingdom. Amen. Most people know nothing about the kingdom of God. All they know about is Jesus died on the cross. And so a lot of people just pray a prayer. He resurrected the third day. There's no change in their life. God saves us just like we are, right? But he don't want us to stay there. He doesn't want us, he wants us to come into the kingdom, get understanding of his kingdom. He, he doesn't want us to be a traitor. We can't live in two worlds, right? We've got to live in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Satan, which is a kingdom of darkness. Used to when people said they got religion, some of us old timers knew what they were talking about. I remember a guy that ran a beer joint down at Piedmont and they said he got religion. Well, he did. He got saved and his life was turned around. You know why I know his life was turned around? He was a tough guy. He closed the beer joint down and forsook the old life. Come on now. That was repentance, right? That's turning away from the old life. So look at Matthew 4, 17, if you will. Matthew 4, 17. Nathan and I was talking on the phone today. We're, we're citizens. We're citizens of the kingdom. Gaddafi is fighting over there right now with the people. I don't know who's all who all's involved. I don't know Al-Qaeda. I don't know who all's involved. But he got citizens either on his side or on the side of the rebels, and they probably don't even know who the rebels are yet. <laughs> but they're either on one side or the other. Am I right? Now, the book of James, James says, he that is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. We're in this world, and we enjoy some things of this world. Do we not? I do. I had a good meal at Jean's today. Big old piece of chicken. I enjoyed the natural. I enjoy some things of this world. There's some entertainment in this world that Christians can, can partake of. I mean, they go to parks, and they take their kids to parks and adults go and they, you know, they, they chase whales and all that kind of stuff. You know, we, we're just grown up children. That's all we all are. We enjoy recreation. We enjoy entertainment. We enjoy the different things, but we, we're not comfortable anymore watching something or listening to something or partaking of something that is evil. I mean, you know, when you're watching something on television and something evil comes on, you oh, you don't, they don't have to, nobody has, God don't have to ring a bell and say, boom, you know. <laughs> you feel it, right? You feel it, you feel it penetrating the, into your room and you, you, you change it and everything. The commercials are even bad sometimes. You're trying to watch the news and they got these commercials. You have to flip it off of that. 
So the reason that we're not comfortable with that anymore is because we have a new nature. The Lord has done something in our life. The kingdom of God has entered into our lives. Amen. And we've had to press in to keep what God's doing. You, you can't back off from what God's doing. You've got to press in to what God's doing. You've got to feed what God's doing. What do you feed with it? Man does not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceedeth forth out of the mouth of God. I do not understand how Christians know that they've got to eat at least two or three meals a day, but yet they never pick their Bible up. And they are anemic spiritually. And they begin to slide back instead of going forward. That's why they call it backsliding. You slide back. It don't happen overnight. So we have to nurture what God has done. We have to nurture the things of the Lord. But I, I want to read this here about the kingdom. The kingdom of God. Somebody, you know, told me uh, that there is no, you know, there's a few people in this earth that's got the kingdom of God. <laughs> but how many know that every one of us that are born again have the kingdom of God? I'll give you scriptures for it later. We're citizens of that we talked about that today. We're citizens of the kingdom. Now, there are benefits. There are kingdom benefits. Are they not benefits? We talked about that today. Are they not benefits of being a citizen of this country? It sure is. There's benefits. Whatever country you're in, there's benefits. Whatever country you live in, if you're a citizen of that country, you have benefits. But you're not a traitor. I'm loyal to the United States of America. I'm not a traitor to the United States of America. A lot of things are not right in this nation, in the government. But I'm not anti-government. We've got to have government. You've got to have order. So you, you, you've got a government. And I'm, I'm, I'm pro-American. Amen. If I lived in England, I'd be pro-England. If I was in Germany, I'd be pro-Germany. If I was in Italy and I was a citizen of Italy, I'd be pro-Italian. Amen. But I am true to my country. A lot of y'all have fought for your country. You've served in the military, at least if you didn't fight for your country. And you've been loyal to that. Judas was a traitor. Because he did not submit to God's kingdom, God's government. He wanted his own order and his own lawless way. Right? Peter even said, when Jesus said, who do people say I am? See, this shows you that people can know who Jesus is and not understand the kingdom, what God wanted to do. He said, Peter, who do, who do you say that I am? And and, and Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And a few words later, Jesus talks about, I've got to go to Jerusalem and suffer because I came to do this. That was my purpose to come, to suffer and to set up the kingdom of God. And Peter said, Oh, I, re I rebuke you, Lord. He said, I, Lord, no, no, it's not going to happen that way. That's, that's not right. You're not going to suffer. It, it, it's going to come another, you know, this is going to come another way. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art offense to me. Amen. So Peter, <laughs> he was coming against what God wanted to do. It's no different than today. When people, when people refuse to obey the Lord, how do you get in the kingdom? For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus the king was obedient unto death. 